Is the world getting warmer? That seems a hell of a question on the tail end of our blizzard. But here in the Canadian Arctic, young scientists are measuring the flow of glaciers to find if the ice cap is moving south or retreating north. Because that's what will govern the climate of the Northern Hemisphere in the long run. The men on this chilly survey are students of McGill University, putting comfort behind them in the interests of knowledge. They take some of their readings every six hours, day and night. At some times of the year, at this latitude, there's sunshine 24 hours a day, so the sun recorder can face both northern and southern arcs. The general conclusion seems to be that the ice is retreating, but more slowly than was at first thought. So our part of the world should get warmer. But as it'll take a century or more to spot the difference, keep your winter woolies on if you live in Britain. Two sets of woolies at the same time if it goes on like this. They say it was the worst blizzard we've had for more than 80 years. I'll have to ask me dad. There were the usual claims to have been the region hardest hit. In Bristol, they say it was undoubtedly the West Country. So much snow fell in so short a time, nobody quite knew how to cope with it. Motorists were advised to leave cars at home. Some couldn't, some wouldn't. Southern Ireland, you don't expect to see battling with snow drifts on this scale. But this was the scene in County Wicklow, no more than 30 miles from Dublin. How the bread convoy got through. In her brother's steps she trod where the snow lay dinted. The baker thought Marie Antoinette had something when she said, let the people eat cake. Back to England, where cattle had to be fed in the fields or they'd have starved. As it was, it must have been a pretty cold meal. What sort of a world is this she's brought me into? It's an ill blizzard that blows nobody any good. So boom time for makers of skid chains. A good job somebody keeps the craft alive. For thousands, chains would have been worth their weight in gold. In scores of places, the wires were down, giving way under the burden of frozen snow. Of course, in two or three hundred years' time, those Arctic glaciers may have gone right back, and Britain will be a sunbather's paradise. Right now, it's a wonder that hordes of Swiss people didn't come here and start winter sports. The washing looked fit for a lot of stiffs. Perhaps it was in the West Country that they had it worst. To get supplies to moorland farmers, RAF helicopters were the only hope. With Flight Lieutenant Webster flew Pathé cameraman Ken Goddard, not expecting the flight to be very much different from scores he's made before, but conditions worsened rapidly. They got to one of the farms, but couldn't take food to cattle on the hillsides because of bad visibility. So they started to return to base, flying over isolated villages on the way. Then the engine seized, and from 250 feet, the helicopter crashed. By a miracle, plus first-rate piloting, nobody was killed. Ken Goddard, badly shaken, lived to tell the tale and bring back his film. Railways, on the whole, kept going well. Back in London, it wasn't very much better. A thaw turned the streets into canals of slush. It almost made your heart bleed to see all the poor people at the bus stops. Those of us who are here in 80 years' time will still remember the blizzard of 63.